Okay, that's where we're up to, really. We were reviewing the story of that student whose tefillin was taken by a prostitute because he had left it in a wall when he had to use the bathroom. And this prostitute took those tefillin and um, made up a story that the uh, student had given, paid the tf- with the tefillin, paid for a prostitution. And it caused this student to, well, s- seems to be that he committed suicide. And because of that, the rabbis established a law that a person should hold their tefillin in their garments, in their hand, and relieve themselves. <clears throat> now comes the Gemara and tells us two, it gives us two brises. First, it tells us a brisa where um, initially they would put the tefillin on, in the hole in the wall near, near the bathroom. The problem was there were mice. And the mice would come in, in I guess, uh, and, and take them, it says. And they made a decree, the rabbis made a decree that people should put them on the opposite side of the wall. So there's two sides to, to the wall. One is near the street and one is near the field. The mice would hang out on the side near the field. And that was, um, that was where, the, um, where you had an issue of mice. So the rabbi said, let's, let's, uh, let's establish a rule that if people uh, need to put their tefillin down and there's no place to put it, put it on the, the street side of the wall. And then it says that there was people that would come and take it. People come and steal it, like this story that we just, that we just said. Similar to the story. It doesn't seem like the story itself is the main reason. According to this brisa, it's simply people would take it. And the rabbis saw that that obviously is not a good option. So they established a rule that you hold it, take it, and hold it in your hand and enter. And the Gemara brings this lahalacha. It says, Rabbi Yasha, the son, the son of Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi, says a halacha, you wrap the, uh, the, the ritzuis, the straps, uh, around the, uh, the tefillin, uh, it says like a safer, which I think means like a safer Torah, that you sort of like a scroll. I think that's what it means. And you hold it uh, opposite your heart. Um, and, uh, and, and, and that's the understanding of this price, that you would hold it opposite your heart and, um, and a person could, could you know, uh, go to the bathroom, use the bathroom while he's holding it in his hand. And um, Rabbi Yosef Barmanyumi says in the name of Rabbi Nachman, as long as the strap doesn't uh, um, hang out of the wrapping, you wrapped it around the tefillin, so you wrap the straps around the tefillin, as long as the strap itself doesn't hang out, as we mentioned, because that strap has a level of holiness, it has kedusha to it, and we spoke about the fact that the, the strap has the letters of Hashem's name on it, and, um, and therefore... Uh, if it's a if it's a tefach, if it's a hand breath hanging out, it would be disrespectful to the tefillin. It would be inappropriate. So therefore, you wrap it around. The person could hold it, and um, and then the Gemara brought a um, a statement of Reb Yaakov Bar Acha in the name of Reb Zera that this whole thing applies when you're planning on putting the tefillin on afterwards because it's by day you're gonna you're taking them off to um to use the bathroom but you're going to be putting them back on but if it's if if uh if there's no more time to put them back on let's say it's getting dark so in this situation you make this kiss this like container for them that has space of a tefach and you place them in it And the idea is that if it has a tefach, 
it's if it has a hand breadth of space in it, it's um, it would be allowed to be placed on the floor or be brought into the bathroom. Two ways of understanding this statement here. Are we just saying you 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 once you have this this uh, little container, this bag, as long as it has a little space, extra space in it, then it's considered that uh, you could then put it on the floor or you could either, or possibly you could bring it into the, the bathroom. Two opinions, the Rashi <laughs> learns one way, there's another commentary that learns another way, but uh, these are the two understandings of it, that once you, that you make this container, it's okay. Now, Rabba Barbarchana says, by day, when you take off the tefillin, you wrap it up like a safer, like we mentioned. You hold it opposite your heart, and at night, you uh, you put them in this container. Now, what we're seeing here is something uh, interesting. Normally, there are many laws about bringing tefillin into places that are inappropriate or... Uh, uh, they're in a, in, a, in a bedroom where people might have relations. Things Normally, we say it needs to have two coverings. And here, what we're saying is all it needs is this <coughs> one, you, uh, one container that might e that's even specially used for the tefillin. In other words, it's really um, a, a container meant for the tefillin, and yet it's going to be allowed. And what it seems like is because here the rabbis gave a leniency uh, because of the um, necessity to wear tefillin constantly. We're dealing with people who used to travel with their tefillin on. As we see tefillin as something that you just go to shul and you put them on in shul. In the olden days, they would wear tefillin all day. What does that mean they would wear it all day? Even when they went to shul, on their way to shul, they would go with the tefillin. Even when they're leaving shul, they're wearing their tefillin. When they're he heading home, even when they would go to eat something, they would still have the tefillin on. We'll see a Gemara later. They would even have their tefillin on. And only when they're eating a full-fledged meal, then they would take it off. And even then, it could be only after they, they're, they're uh, ready to start eating. According to one opinion, they, they would take it off at the table. So we're dealing with a whole different um, way of, um, of, uh, of, of fulfilling the mitzvah of tefillin. Nowadays, we're not so familiar with this, but this is the way it used to be. Yes, Ezra, you're muted. The boxes that the uh, tefillin are in, does that count as one of the coverings? So, so the, it, the, the Gemara here, when we talk about the covering, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be good enough because it needs to have a tefach. Those boxes do not have a tefach. They don't, they're, they're, they're too small. Um, but what you're asking is maybe that should be considered a box for a double covering. That's what uh, I was saying. Right, for the double covering. I don't think so because um, the problem is, number one is it doesn't fully cover the tefillin. Uh, there's holes. And number two, it could be the ritzuois, the straps might need to be covered as well in the knot. So I think <clears throat> th that box wouldn't be good enough, but the bag around the tefillin is good enough. And then as long as you have an extra bag around that, that should be a double covering. Uh, yes, uh, Robert. So I, I, guess, I guess the extension of what David is saying is that now contemporary, we have the coverings for either the head and the arm boxes. Well, that designates which one they are. So that's one covering. And then we stick it in a tefillin bag. So that then fulfills the obligation of having it doubly covered. <coughs> yes. So, so the, the thing is that I, I, what I answered as was that that doesn't work. The uh, the boxes I don't think are good enough to cover. Okay. They don't cover the entire tefillin. In the entire and the bag, okay. the bag would be something that's set aside specifically for the tefillin. So for our Gemara purposes, what we're learning here 
that the person has nowhere to bring it except into the, they have to bring it into the bathroom or they have to put it on the floor in order for them to use the bathroom. Here, uh, for our Gemara purposes, it would be okay, maybe the bag that the tefillin go in, because that bag, even though it's set aside solely for tefillin, it is a tefach. It would seem that it's a tefach, big most of the bags that I'm familiar with. I measured my own bag this morning. Seems like it's a tefach. Um, according to the understanding that I have, I said I saw um, they they the, the, the I saw it quoted from the um, a certain safer uh, the Dirshu Mishnah Brura. I don't know if uh, Ezra. I don't know if you have that safer the Dirshu. That's a certain Mishnah Brura that came out in the last ten years, called printed by Dirshu. They have commentaries on the Mishnah Brura. Do you do you have that? No. Okay. Uh, I thought maybe Isaac might have it, but I see Isaac. No, I, I, I don't. Sorry. Okay. Um, Isaac's not here. Anyway, uh, the, the, there I saw it quoted that the 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 concept of tefach is the stop is even without your tefillin, as long as it has a tefach. Even though when you put your tefillin in now, it doesn't have a tefach anymore. That would that that's that's considered good enough. That's the understanding that I that I I, I, I saw quoted. So I have to, I want to look up the original source and double check that. But according to that, the bag should be good enough for this purposes. And it should also be good enough to be one of the coverings of the tefillin when you need two coverings. So for generally, we say you need two coverings. One of the coverings cannot be exclusive for tefillin. So like a shopping bag or a, um, you know, maybe a drawer something that it's wrapped in that's not meant for tefillin, that would be a second covering when you need a second covering. Our Gemara is not talking about the second covering at this point. Our Gemara here is telling us that there is a leniency that you could have one covering. Many people are not familiar with this law. And I guess it doesn't really apply too much to have one covering because again, we don't, we don't deal with these type of situations much. We have numerous places where we could leave our, put down our tefillin, but uh, the, uh, the, the concept that our Gemara mentions is something unique. It's not commonly known that there are scenarios where one bag that's exclusively meant for tefillin could be considered a covering for the tefillin that you could even put it either on the floor or even bring it in a bathroom. But that's, uh, that's what our Gemara here is, is mentioning. And it is brought in Shulchan Aruch. Not that people are familiar with that chapter of Shulchan Aruch, but it is, it is brought in Shulchan Aruch, such a, this, this, uh, a leniency. Yes, uh, Robert. Yeah, the other question is, um, when we just read that um, men would wear the tefillin all day, except for when you have, I guess, a sit-down meal, that's a very profound commitment. How did it evolve that we only now wear tefillin um, in the morning um, and not do it on a daily basis? And how did that evolve? Is there a rationale for it? Yeah, yeah. So, so I don't know all the details exactly when. That's something you could, I'm sure we could look up and, and find out maybe is something you might want to do a little research on when that exactly changed. But the reason for it, we, we do know. And the reason has to do with the fact that we do not have a clear mind, a clean mind enough for tefillin to constantly uh, never remove our thoughts from tefillin. Our mind is supposed to constantly be on the tefillin when the tefillin is on us. And so because of that, we limit it for the davening, and that's it. We're not really supposed to wear tefillin uh, whenever we do anything else because we will not, our mind will not be on the holiness of the tefillin. The tefillin has a certain holiness, and we're not supposed to be mesiach das, it's called. We're not supposed to turn our mind from the from, away from the tefillin. And um, as it is, even during the davening, it's hard to concentrate constantly on the tefillin and on Hashem and on the prayers. Our minds often drift off and we start thinking that we're in the marketplace, we're in the store, we're, we're uh, on the internet, we're remembering what we read about the news, we're thinking about uh, uh, what we're going to eat for breakfast or, you know, so our mind drifts off as it is. So it's limited, tefillin is limited to our... Um, I, you know, to our prayers. Yeah. Yes, Robert. I don't want to fixate on this entirely, but you know, when I went and I bought tefillin, it always says right-handed tefillin. So I uh -huh. guess the question is, is there such a thing as a left-handed tefillin? Yeah. yeah. So, so the yeah. knot, right. the left, 
the knot of the lefty is on the opposite side as on the righty. So in the tefillin itself, the way it's made, there's a, a bigger um, indention where they have to put the knot. So it, right. they actually have to drill much differently for the, the left each fill in than the right each fill in because it, it switches where they drill, where they, uh, uh, how, they, how they make it because the, the knot is, is, has to fit in to, to, in order for it to be close to the, to the box. So if I, you look uh, on your fill-in, if you look on your, I'm talking about the hand fill-in. No, yeah, right, the head, right, yeah. The head fill-in, there's no difference because the head fill-in is, is, is on the head, whether you're a righty or a lefty, you have one head. But uh, the hand fill-in, if, if, if you're a lefty, you put it on your, they put it on their right hands. Now there's a big discussion okay. as to what does it mean a lefty? Does it mean you write with your left hand or does it mean you do everything else with your left hand? And uh, because of that, there's some people that actually put both. They put their tefillin on both hands because that's why it's not good to be a lefty uh, because you get into stylus and uh, it's questionable uh, what hand, you know, what, what, what hand you should put tefillin on. If it goes by writing or it goes by everything else. Um, yeah. Uh, someone else wanted to say yeah. something, uh, uh, Edith? Yeah. Yes. Um, in what years were these uh, decisions made as to putting it, uh, you know, what wall to put it in and all of that if you're going to the bathroom? So um, the Gemara was, you know, was, was compiled from the rabbis between the year 200 and the year 500. So this is when these discussions were mentioned. Now, they are quoting the Berishina, like the, the Brysa is quoting Berishina originally. So it could be from, well, I'm, I, I should also clarify one thing. That's the Gemara. The Gemara, in other words, the Gemara that was, that's written is, is, is from the year 200 to 500. The, before that was the, um, was the, Mishnah. The Mishnah. And the Mishnah, the Amoiroim, they um, they were from um, they were a few hundred years before the Gemara. So the whenever you see a Brysa, it's from that time period, like from maybe uh, well, I, I should look it up. I don't know exactly uh, if I have that, Expanding on it. I just want to put my two cents in. <clears throat> Maybe a lot of this changed when the Industrial Revolution happened when mm -hmm. here in the United States. Is it possible that's what when they stopped wearing the tefillin all day no. long? No, no, no. No, 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 much, no, no. That's nothing much earlier that. than that. But that is a good thought. Okay, so let's see. The Amoyroik period is from the year 200 until the year 500. The Tanoyim period is from the 4th century BCE. Um, Shimon HaTzadik, from the 4th century BCE, or the 3rd century BCE, uh, all the way until, until Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi, the year 200. So it's a number of hundreds. It's, it's, it's six, about 600 years, it seems like. Five, right? The three, uh, 3rd century uh no what, what should i say 300 years three, yeah five about 500 years okay so that's um that basically now why does it say here the zugois are 200 bc um, uh-huh well i guess they started a little earlier a little uh, yeah it's a little less than 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 500 years Okay, so that's uh, so oh, that's yeah. when, whenever you see a, a brisa, it's from that time. But I must say, it doesn't really say exactly when. Like for example, it says originally. Originally, they would put fill in in the in this place, and then they changed it. They established it. It it's not clear what 
what era that actually was. They're they're talking about what used to be. So they're they're you know, so it's uh let's see, uh, and it doesn't even have a name of who mentioned that law. Now, what's interesting is uh, Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi. Um, uh, he says the halacha. Yeshua ben Levi was an Amaira, what, but he was really at the end of the Tanoim. It's an argument if he's a Tana or an Amaira, because he was one of Rebbe's students. And uh, Rebbe was the, the end of the Mishnah, but he wrote his student, he, in, in this past week's Perke uh, Yavos, he actually quotes Rebbe Yeshua ben Levi, which would mean that he's really a Tana, except the fact that he was really a student of of Rebbe, but Rebbe was uh, wanted to, so to speak, honor him and put him in the Mishnah, put his statement in the Mishnah, even though uh, he really was more was really an Amira, considered an Amira. In any event, um, excuse me, but we, I, what I is recall, that? I do recall a, a discussion. I want to say it was in uh, Tanit that. They wore to fill in, in the fields while farming. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're, it, it definitely, uh, I mean, even in Shulchan Aruch, it talks about the fact that if they're going, if someone's walking in the field and uh, they come across something that's inappropriate and they're wearing their tefillin. So it, it, it's pretty clear that they used to, you know, they used to do things with their tefillin on. Yeah, you're very correct. Uh, uh, um, Ruvain, good, good point. Yep. So they really would, uh, they would do, they would, they would uh, be walking around. They would travel with their tefillin on. They would uh, do their work with their tefillin on, right? So in any event, the Gemara here continues and says that um, the halacha would be that person should wrap it up and hold it in his right hand opposite his heart. And the reason why the, the, some rabbis seem to say to hold it without the wrapped in your garment is because they're afraid if you wrap it in your garment, it might fall, even though you're holding it, but it could slip out. If you're holding it with your hand, you have a better grasp. So that's the reason that they hold that way. Even though in Shulchan Aruch, we hold the other way. We hold, you hold it with your garment if this scenario would, would, would apply. Um, and then here it says, but you have to make sure that it doesn't, the strap doesn't, um, um, doesn't uh, hang out for a tefach, a hand grip. And then the Gemara said that there's a difference if you're going to um, uh, be putting them back on or not. If you're going to, if you're not putting them back on, then you got to do the, the uh, you have to make for them some type of a container that uh, uh, fits at least the tefach and then it's considered uh, okay. You could put it in, put it on the floor, bring it in the bathroom, whatever, however you're going to do it. Now, <coughs> so, so we had two statements like that. First, we had Rabbi Yaakov Bar Acha in the name of Rabbi Zeira, who said that. And then Rabbi Bar Bar Chana in the name of Rabbi Yechonon basically said the same thing, that by day you do one way and by night, um, uh, by night you do the opposite. Both of them seem to say the same thing. Now, Abaye says that... Um, if you have a, if you have a, uh, a, a, a container that's not exclusive for tefillin, then um, it doesn't have to have that tefach space. So if you have such a container, like a bag or something, then, then, then you're fine. Then you could put it, put it right on the floor or bring it into the bathroom because it doesn't need to have that tefach if it's not its... Um, exclusive for tefillin. And, and then the Gemara gave an example of uh, something that doesn't, that's not large, and yet it, uh, it's able to be a um, container for something that's uh, to save something from being tummy. So it could, be, it could be a container even if it doesn't have a tefach, even it doesn't have a tefach of space. Now, then the Gemara talked about a story about Holding svarim, well, they, they, the, the rabbi, the big rabbis used to have a shamish. They would have a, students that would help serve them. And so they would walk around with them wherever they went. They wouldn't they'd just pop into the base of the base medrash to give their share, to give their lecture. 
But instead, these students, they would walk them from their house to the base medrash. They, they walked out of the base medrash. Some students would follow with them. They went to the bathroom. The students would hold their, hold their stuff for them. And here you have one of these uh, students who was, uh, who was uh, helping. Uh, Rabbi Yechonon was Rabbi Barbara Khan. Uh, he was together with Rabbi Yechonon. And he, uh, he said, when we would go after Rabbi Yechonon, and he went to the bathroom. We would he, he he would give us the safer that he was holding. He was holding a safer of Agoda, and um, and uh, the commentaries mention that the, the reason why he was holding a safer of Agoda was because most of the Torah that they taught they did by heart, but Agoda was much harder, and uh, they weren't always <laughs> mucky. They weren't always so fluent in it. So for Agada, they would have, uh, they would write it. So those, the, the books of Agada, Agada mean like Medrash, Medrash. They would, but when it came to Jewish law, that's, everything was by heart. When it came to Medrash type of the uh, Agada, Agadic uh, Midrashim, uh, they, they, would, uh, they would have a book that they would, that they would, that they would read from. So what did he do with this book? Uh, he used to give it to us to hold. But the tefillin, he didn't give to us to hold. So the tefillin, he walked into the bathroom, even though he had a option B, he had another option. He could have handed us his tefillin also, but he didn't because he said the rabbis permitted it. And the, um, <coughs> the reason why the rabbis permitted someone to bring the tefillin into the bathroom was mainly because uh, the, uh, no one should steal them. But once the rabbis permitted it, he said, let me take it in. And then it'll also be good for uh, Ninatron for to guard me from the demons. And what that means is in the olden days, there used to be more, it used to be a concern of, um, of Mazikin, of demons, of these outhouses, you know. And uh, so he wanted to bring the tefillin with him, especially because the, rab the rabbis permitted it, so it's permissible. And, uh, and he said that this will also help for the, for the Mazikin. Uh, and so now we turn the page to where in 23B. Rabbi Smith? Yes. It, maybe it could also be that even though he had a student that could hold it, he would, uh, it was like a limud, it was a teaching to show that this is something that you could do. Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay, maybe, maybe. There, there are a few other... Uh, Rabbi, I have a question. What is that? What, what did you say, Ezra? Just one second, Susan. What did you say, Ezra? No, it says at the very bottom, it says, Amal ho'il vish v'sha'una nehu, that, uh, that since it, it was permitted, the Rabbanan, since the rabbis permitted it, didn't have, there was no reason to give it to them. Right. The very... right, right, right. No, uh, Ruben is wondering if maybe he specifically didn't give it to them to teach them that it's allowed. In other words, the simple way of reading the Gemara is not that. The simple way of reading the Gemara is he just said, the rabbis permitted me to take it in. I'm not teaching you a law now. I'm simply doing this because of my own benefit. It's going to save me. It's going gonna, it's gonna to guard me from the mazikin. But um, uh, Ruben is sort of asking a question. Why didn't he want to do this simply to teach them the law? It's, it's, you know, I'm, I'm sort of like taking, taking his uh, statement and making it into a question. Sort of like this would, th th this, maybe he should have wanted to teach them a halacha from this, that uh, this is permissible. So I'm guessing that maybe this was common knowledge that this was permissible because everyone used the bathroom then and they all had their tefillin. So maybe it was common knowledge. So that, that would be my answer to the question. If you want to ask it, that, that, that they, knew, they knew this halacha. And so he was simply showing even further than the halacha that it's, he felt that, you know, that he wants, he wants it to guard him from the mazikin, even though, even though he has other options, but the halacha is this way and he's going to rely on it to, and it's going to guard him from the mazikin. Now I would, I would, if I were to discuss this, uh, this uh, story, I would want to look into uh, is it right to benefit, to take, to use the tefillin to benefit you uh, from the mazikin? Like, was that, is that, 
that's what it's, the Gemara seems, that it's fine. The Gemara seems to be saying that it's fine to use the tefillin for your, you know, to, to be able not to have any issues from the, from the mazikin. And um, um, on the other hand, it seems uh, a little surprising that person would, would uh, say, like, I'll take advantage of the tefillin that they should, that they should guard me. I'm going to bring them with me so that they guard me from the, from the mazikin. In other words, sort of like using the tefillin for your own benefit. So that would be something to, to maybe look into, see if the commentaries, I wonder if any of the commentaries say anything about that. While we're at it, I, I, Isaac, are you, are you with us, Isaac? Isaac, do you hear me? Yes. I, yeah. I was wondering if you might have a Mishnah Brura with the deer shoe, uh, pub, the deer shoe Mishnah Brura. No. Okay. Okay, we, we just thought maybe I would ask. ask um, yes, yes, Susan, yes. Okay, in the Steinsalt, it says that uh, that there are sacred objects that you don't want to be walking around with uh -huh. and holding them. Uh, Tefillin is said, or a Torah scroll, uh, and they're not to be wherever you sleep. Or when you uh, you're not supposed to have a knife or money or yeah, yeah that's that's a gemara further. We didn't do that tomorrow. Yet. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I apologize. Now, what we do see here is um, that if you don't have to bother someone. To, in other words, he could have gotten his students to hold the tefillin. And um, uh, the, 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 uh, the fact that he didn't, because the rabbis permitted him, it's, it, it implies that, you know, in this scenario, it's not right for me to bother someone to do it if I'm allowed to, even though maybe it's better to have someone uh, uh, not have to bring the tefillin in the bathroom. But he felt that if the rabbis permitted it, why should I be bothering my students to do this if it's if it's allowed? Which is an interesting uh, interesting way of 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 uh, you know of of acting because um, a lot of times we take on extra chumras, extra uh, strict uh, um, uh, ways of following the halacha, and then we expect others so, sort of we sort of like rely on others. Like someone doesn't want to use the Eruv and then he expects someone else to go and, and carry things for him. You know, is that, is that the appropriate way? You want to be strict and you don't want to rely on the Eruv, which is obviously a kosher Eruv, but you're going you're gonna to sort of rely on others to, uh, to help you keep up with your, your, if you really don't want to use the Eruv, then don't use it. But uh, so here, this, uh, he said, since it's, um, uh, uh, since the rabbis permitted it, uh, Ninatron is the girsa we have, but there's another girsa is Loy Nitrach. I'm not going to bother someone because the rabbis, this is okay. This is according to halacha, okay. I'm not bothering someone else to be extra machmir, make them do something in order for me to be extra strict. So that's an interesting, uh, that, that girsa is my father's, to... yes, my Rebbe, my father's cardinal rule. Uh -huh. You don't bother, you don't bother other people. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Nice. Rabbi? Yes. I wanted to say since the film, one of the benefits of the film apparently is protecting you from the maziki. So why not use that benefit when you're going into the bathroom? Right, right. Well, you know, it boils down to the, uh, the mitzvah of mezuzah, really, because mezuzah is like a, a, it has a personal benefit of, of protection. So it's spoken about, is it, is it appropriate like to take a mezuzah with you when you're traveling or something, is that considered a problem? You're sort of like trying to benefit from a mezuzah or, or um, 
uh, there must be other scenarios where you're where you're sort of relying on the benefit. Like, um, I have to look it up. I think it's brought in the Sefer Hachinuch about this idea that that the whole the whole idea of the mezuzah is to is to give you protection. So if you have in mind, so I think that's the case. If you have in mind for protection, are you doing something wrong? In other words, should you only have in mind I'm doing this for the mitzvah? Or should you also, or can you also have in mind you're doing, putting up a mezuzah for protection? Because on the one hand, uh, you know, the protection is like a fringe benefit maybe. So if it's, it's so fine, you can have protection, but should you have that in mind when you're, you know, when you're putting up your mezuzah? Or is that considered like doing it for a uh, ulterior motive? You're, you're doing it for the protection. I think because the idea of a mezuzah is protection, I think uh, somehow it's allowed to be part of your intention is the protection that you want the protection from because that's part of the mitzvah is to be protected. I have to look it up. It's a, I, I think it's supposed a paper, A mezuzah is supposed you know. to be on your doorway. The mezuzah yeah, is supposed to be placed on the doorway. Right, the so when you put it on your doorway, the tefillin not on you already. Okay, okay. Uh huh. I, could I interrupt? Just one uh, second. Just one second, Ben. What, so what you're saying is that the, the, the tefillin is on you already. So you're not putting it for that benefit, but you're right. just uh, enjoying the benefit that is there for right. you, that it's right. giving you. Okay, okay. Um, uh, and Ezra had his hand up for a while. So Susan, I'm going to put you on hold. Let me see what Ezra sure, wants to sure. say. No problem, Ezra. Yeah. Rabbi, you, you, the, the, the bracha is ligvoa mezuzah. It doesn't, it's not ligvoa mezuzah mekabel hagana or something of that form. <laughs> so the whole uh-huh. point here is to put it up. That's the mitzvah of it. The other stuff is the benefit uh, of it. So, you know, you can't your have intention you feel, is to put it up. Uh, you feel you're not allowed to have intention for protection. I have to look it up. I believe it's discussed. I believe not they when, did. not when you're putting it up. When Even, you're putting it, okay. that's the okay? okay. The rest of it, you know. I mean, why are we doing it? We're doing it so Hashem knows that we're here and we are following His laws, and so therefore provides us with, with protection. Uh huh. Okay. Okay. Well, Mitz uh, Hashem, I'll try to take a look and see if I can find the. Uh, I believe it's connected. There's a Sefer Achinuch about it, and I believe it's discussed in the later, uh, the later commentaries. But okay, it's a, it's a good, 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 uh, good point, Ezra and uh, Susan. Yes, uh, I was just going to say I either wear a Jewish star or I wear a mezuzah around my neck. Okay, and I never only because I'm very proud to be a Jew. It has nothing to do with protection or anything. It's just that I'm very proud of. Right. Well, but well, I don't know that people really carry a mezuzah uh, around their neck. That could be an issue because, um, you know, you might be taking it's a, it. Into it's a mezuzah. I doubt whether there's anything inside. Uh, oh, okay. it's it's a it's a it looks like a mezuzah. It's a, mezuzah a, a, a mezuzah art. It's called uh, exactly. Uh, exactly. Uh, mezuzah art on your as a. Yeah. So that's a very nice thing. But that has nothing. Yeah, that that's not a mezuzah. That's just mezuzah art. Correct. But we're, we're talking about putting a mezuzah up for protection. And uh, and I'm not sure if this uh, if there is such a concept of bringing a mezuzah when someone travels at, or, or, you know, being next to someone. I have to look up that as well, if that's something that's, uh, that's I know, uh, allowed. I know of people that have it in their cars. Uh-huh. That's yes. weird. What, that's what does that mean? They keep one in their car? Right, they keep it in their glove compartment or on the door. Right. No, the glove compartment. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I've wow. had them hanging it from the window, uh, from the uh, oh, mirror. Yeah, on the mirror. Oh. Uh-huh. Right, it reminds me. We used to have when I was young. We used to have a car, and there was like a little white strip near the door. And so people used to ask us, "Is that a mezuzah?" <laughs> you know, it was uh, somehow. I don't know why the car. This car came with like a white strip near the door. Anyway. Um, uh, we are uh, on the top of page Chaf Gimel, Ahmed Bays, and um, maybe let's start. Let's start over here, Omar Rav on the top line. The the top line is basically a very similar story to the previous story. Rabbi, and, uh, yes, David. 
Yeah, I wanted to say uh, two things. One, one is that the Rebbe uh, had made a big tefillin campaign before one of the Israel wars, and I believe it was um, stated that the tefillin would act as a protection for the for the soldiers, and that it would also give uh, a fear to the to the enemy to the nations, if I'm not mistaken, right? Uh huh. I, I, I'm not sure if that was the tefillin or or the I think that was tefillin, but yeah, uh, yeah. but maybe it was praying before the, the fight. Yeah, because the tefillin was a huge thing. <coughs> and it's interesting that it says the Torah zroya af that by uh, it says that the uh, the the unique uh, element of uh, the unique uh, tr- uh, talent of the unique talent of one of the tribes was that it would. It would destroy the enemy by uh, ripping off uh, their uh, arm together with their head. And one of the commentaries uh, explains that that refers to that's because of the power of the tefillin, the arm and the head. So uh, I think the Rebbe brought this maybe as a one of the uh, 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 you know anic- like side points to the, to the reason for the. Uh, that this also was an additional uh, idea that it's uh, that it's connected to uh, you know winning a war of tefillin helps winning a war, but that's besides the main point. Of course, of tefillin causes baro kolame haaretz that the nations will see and they'll be afraid. That's the main source of how tefillin is is a protection for against the enemies um, and I, causes I them to be afraid of us. I think that somebody had questioned, like, are you saying that somebody that's not wearing tefillin des- deserves to be killed in the war? So the answer, I don't know if the Rebbe answered it, or the answer basically was that the tefillin are acting like a helmet. It's just giving you extra protection. It's not that uh-huh. you, God forbid, deserve to die uh-huh. if you don't have uh-huh. it, but if you do have it, it gives you extra right. protection. Like Interesting. A helmet. Interesting. The second thing I was going to say was uh, the idea of the mezuzah in the car the Rebbe had uh, s- spoken about this because there was a terrible tragedy uh, with some cam- campers and counselors. I think it was in the Montreal and Ghana, Israel. And yeah, there was were- an accident, right? One, yeah. one, one person passed away many years ago, yeah. Right. And the Rebbe said that people should have a kosher mezuzah in their car in a uh-huh. clean, respectable place, respectful place in the uh-huh. location. And people should have this mezuzah in their car, along with a, um, a pushka and I think a chitas. Uh huh. Uh huh. So, so the Rebbe spoke very strongly about a mezuzah in the car as protection. Right. I just wonder if if people still do that. Most like, people that I know do it. I, I never they, stop. The, so you have a mezuzah in your car, really? Yeah. Uh-huh. Sure. Yeah. Interesting, yeah. Because when the Rebbe said to do it, who said not to do it? Who stopped it? <laughs> you know? If people start to do it because the Rebbe spoke about it, nobody said to cease. Right. Right. Do you have a mezuzah, Ruben, in your car? I don't. Uh-huh. Rabbi, I was but... at the bar mitzvah in, in Florida, and they were handing out a mezuzah in a box to everybody. And, okay. and everybody said they're going to put it in their car. Uh-huh. uh-huh. It was a, 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 a nice box, a very right. decorative box. And did I, it, have one, have... I have one, I'm using it in the glove compartment. Uh-huh. Now, did it, did it have a, um, uh, uh, you sure it had the parchment in it? And it was a kosher mezuzah-like? I did not check, but I believe it has, yes. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Right, right. Okay. Anyway, so here we have in the Gemara, we have uh, the Gemara um, gives another story, and one of the, the commentaries discuss why is this story necessary. It seems to be the same as the previous story. So, in any event, but the, let's let's read it inside. So, Amar Rav Kiyavazlinen Basreid Rav Nachman Rav said. That when I would go after Rav Nachman, we would go, we would help Rav Nachman. Uh, he have a nucket sifra dagarita. He would be carrying his uh, his sefer, his book of Ag- Agoda, like a uh, midrashic uh, teachings. Uh, Yahiv Lan, he gave it to us to hold. He have a nucket uh, tefillin. 
when uh, um, um, when he was holding his tefillin in his hands, lo yahivlan, he didn't give it to us. So Omar, he said, since the rabbis permitted uh, uh, to bring it um, um, in the okay. uh, into the uh, to the bathroom, the natron. I will bring them with me, and it'll it'll uh, it'll it'll protect me. Now let's see. So why is it that it's brought? Why do they bring this uh, extra piece? What does it help? So I see in the back they ask this question, and um, they bring the rush has a girsa has a version uh, that Rabbi Yochanan did not put tefillin shal rush often because he had a um, he had a health issue on his head. And so all it was was his tefillin shel yad that he, that, he, uh, that he was carrying with him. So because of that, the first story doesn't tell us about the tefillin shel reish. It only tells us about the tefillin shel yad. The tefillin shel reish might be more strict. It has the shin uh, on the on the outer box, the two, the two shins on the side. Halach alamaisha mesinai. That's a tradition, and um, and therefore the Gemara brings the story of Rav Nachman that brought the that brought with him the tefillin uh, shall, that, that, of course, had the tefillin shall reish as well. So this is based on, a, on the Yushalmi that says that Rabbi Yechonon had a certain uh, health issue with his putting on the tefillin shall reish that he didn't often put it on. It says he would put it talking on. About the tefillin on the head or the arm? Which one are you talking about? So the reason why the Gemara brings both stories is because the first story only tells us about the hand tefillin because okay. he didn't necessarily okay. have with him the, the head filling. And so therefore okay. it brings the second story and that's what okay. the second story adds to the first story. I see, I didn't understand, thank you. Now comes the next statement of the Gemara. Tanura, but on the rabbis learn, a person should not hold something while they're davening. What shouldn't they hold? A bag of tefillin. They have a pair of tefillin they're holding. Nope. You shouldn't hold it in your hand or you shouldn't hold a Sefer Torah bezroa or a Sefer Torah in his arm. You shouldn't hold that via Spalel and Davin. So if you are holding a Sefer Torah, you shouldn't Davin Shmona Esrei with that Torah in your hand. You won't be able to concentrate. You're afraid it's going to fall. You're, you won't be relaxed. You won't be, you'll be too nervous. You'll be worried. And, uh, and the same thing would be holding a pair of tefillin. A person should not urinate while holding these items. And a person shouldn't sleep while holding these items. That's the simple understanding of this, of this brisa. Well, if you're holding it, you shouldn't go to sleep. We're afraid it's going to fall. Not a permanent sleep and not a temporary sleep. Now, um, there is a complicated Rashi over here. Rashi says the reason why you shouldn't sleep in them is because we're afraid you might pass gas. And now, the problem is that that's not an issue if you're holding the tefillin. That's only a problem if you're wearing tefillin. So all the commentaries are try to figure out what does Rashi mean? Is Rashi, does Rashi mean that what we're dealing with is someone wearing the tefillin that you can't sleep in them? Or are we talking about holding the tefillin? The, the common understanding is holding the tefillin, but they, they, they seem to understand Rashi. Rashi must be talking about maybe uh, wearing the tefillin. But in any event, uh, the common understanding of the other commentaries is that we're dealing with holding the tefillin and you can't daven while you're holding the tefillin and you shouldn't be uh, a person shouldn't urinate while holding the tefillin, and a person shouldn't sleep while holding the tefillin. Amar Shmuel. Now Shmuel says, Sakin u Moisu Kai 
the kikar, a knife, money, a plate. And a loaf of bread, and these are also prohibited. And the reason why they're prohibited is because we're afraid, you're going to be afraid that they're going to fall and you won't be able to concentrate properly. And uh, the commentary is discussed. Does this, is the, are these just examples or are these specific cases that specifically these things are a problem because you won't be able to concentrate or, um, or is it a general... Um, prohibition, a problem of 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 um, of all just holding things that you won't be able to concentrate when you're davening. Now, in the uh, Shulchan Aruch, um, uh, in the Alter Rebbe Shulchan Aruch, I saw he brings that. Of course, you're allowed to hold the sitter, and um, but it says when you're davening, you shouldn't hold these things to fill in. Uh, not the other svarim, a uh, plate, uh, like a plate of food, a uh, knife, money, you're afraid, well, knife, you're afraid it's going to hurt you when it falls, it might might uh, stab you. Money will get, uh, you'll lose, uh, a loaf of bread you won't be able to eat, and um, you, you won't, so therefore you won't be able to um, concentrate properly. Other things that if it falls, it doesn't bother you, uh, so you would be allowed to hold it says but it's a mitzvah min hamuvchar, not to hold anything your hands should be together like you're standing before a king in other words you really it's a mitzvah min hamuvchar, preferable not to hold not to hold anything and um just see if the uh if the mission of brura i don't yeah if the mission of brura, but today we hold a sidu so the siddur is allowed now, a siddur, a lulav in its time, you're allowed to hold during sukkahs, even though if it falls, it'll become puzzle. There, it's a mitzvah. Holding it is a mitzvah, and you're not going to be uh, concerned because of it. You won't be nitrad. Your mind won't be um, torud. Will be, uh, you, you'll still be able to concentrate because it's a mitzvah. Here, it seems like the issue is that you're... Um, I guess it's not a mitzvah, so it's considered a, uh, um, it ruins your kavana. But here it's part of the mitzvah, you're still thinking about Hashem. Uh, so in the uh, the regular Shulchan Aruch, Tzadik Vav, um, so it doesn't mention about the mitzvah min hamubchar, that it's preferable not to hold Anything else? <clears throat> uh -huh. So it's, that's the Alter Rebbe's edition. Interesting. Where does he get it from? Mitzvah min hamuvchar. So maybe that's from the other commentaries here that that understand uh, this to be more of an example not just specifically these. In any event, um, that, that's what our Gemara says, that a person shouldn't hold all these items. Now comes a little complicated uh, Gemara, because the Gemara is going to be debating if what Rava says is correct or not. Amar Rava, Rava said, Amar Rav Sheshis, in the name of Rav Sheshis, Leis Hilchas Hamas Nisa. The Halacha does not follow this brisa, the beishamai he, because this is beishamai, and we know that uh, we don't follow beishamai; we follow beishilo, and also because we said the halacha. What is the halacha about a person bringing tefillin in the bathroom? Beishamai was the one who said you leave it outside, and beishilo said you hold it and enter, and we know. That, that that's the halacha, that you hold it and you enter the bathroom and you can use the bathroom while you're holding the tefillin. So if it says that you're not supposed to hold tefillin while you're urinating, uh, which is what we just read, that must be Beishamai who says you got to leave it in the wall. Beishamai has said that, that you leave it in the wall. This is Beishamai. The Ibeishilel, if it would be Beishilel, hashta Beishakisei Kavua Shari, 
the earlier Gemara was talking about defecating in a bathroom, in a Beis HaKisei Kavu, an established bathroom, that you would be allowed to bring tefillin inside and hold it. So if you're allowed to do that, Beis HaKisei Arai, to urinate in a temporary bathroom, me boy, would that be a question? So it must be that a person is allowed to bring the tefillin and hold them while they are urinating. Uh, but what do you mean? The Brisa says you're not allowed to? No, that Brisa is based Shama. So this is the statement of Rava that Rava says, you, we just read this Brisa. This is not the Halacha. The Halacha really follows uh, Beis Hillel. In this Brisa, it doesn't have a name. But we're, Rava is saying, if you were following the discussion on the previous page, you will see that that is the opinion of uh, Beis Shammai and um, Beis Hillel in Rebbe Akiva both argued. Um, uh, Rebbe Akiva said, you got to hold it with the garment. Beis, Beis, uh, uh, Beis Hillel said, hold it in your hand. And Beis Shammai was the one said, leave it in the, in the, uh, in the window that's near the, near the uh, street. And uh, then you, uh, then you, uh, then you, then you go to the bathroom. So, and and when you leave, you gotta separate four amos. That was Rebbe in Putaman. So that was uh, Beis Shama. So the Gemara is trying to compare these two brises. It says this one doesn't have a name. This one, Rebbe says this is this is Beis Shammai because it says that you gotta uh, you, that you're not allowed to hold the tefillin and urinate. And if the previous Gemara said you could even defecate with tefillin, how much more so you should be allowed to urinate while holding a bag of tefillin? Again, we're talking about holding the tefillin. And, uh, and, and here it says you're not allowed to urinate. And the previous Gemara said you would be allowed to defecate with tefillin. So that's why the Rabbi says his statement that this must be Beishamai and we don't follow Beishamai. The Gemara, I, the problem is our time is up, but the Gemara now is going to bring a brisa that says that things that I permitted to you here, I prohibited to you there. Which means that there is going to be a case of distinction, that one case is going to be permitted and another case is going to be prohibited. So the Gemara wants to say, Maybe this is the scenario that even though logically this doesn't make sense, why should it be permitted to take tefillin into an established bathroom? And that would be allowed, and the person could defecate with the, holding the tefillin, and, per, and, and, and yet to, to, to bring them into a, um, uh, a non-established bathroom and to urinate with holding the tefillin, that would be prohibited. Logically, that doesn't make sense. But the Brisa says a statement that there are things that I permitted to you here, but I prohibited to you there. And maybe this is the exact scenario that I pr permitted to you this in one place and I prohibited to you there, even though logically it doesn't make sense. But that is exactly what the Brisa says. So there's a statement in a Brisa that says things that I permitted to you here, I prohibited to you there. And this, so, so, so let me read it inside. Mesve, let, they, they asked a question on Rava's statement that it says in Abraisa, things that I permitted to you here, varim shehitarti l'chokan, things that I permitted to you here, which the Gemara is thinking means a established bathroom to defecate, you could hold fill in while you're defecating. Asarti l'chokan, I prohibited to you there, maybe that's talking about urinating, holding the bag of tefillin that I prohibited to you over there, or holding the tefillin itself, I should say. Holding the tefillin itself, I prohibited to you there. So my love tefillin, this is probably talking about tefillin, which would mean that this fits with Beis Hillel. That Beis Hillel, even though the previous page we saw that he says it's permitted, and here he says it's prohibited, they're two separate cases, and even though logically it doesn't make sense, but that's exactly what the Bryce says, that there are cases where I permitted to you in one place, and I prohibited to you in another place. So the Gemara says, Beis Hillel, it makes sense that this is the case, that this is, this, this Brisa follows with Beis Hillel. That means that Hitarti Lufakan, that I permitted to you over here, um, I permitted to you over here, which is referring to Kavua, a Beis Medrash, uh, a Beis Knesset, excuse me, a Beis Akise. 
what did I say? Beis Hakise Kavua, established uh, bathroom, is uh, I permitted to you. Asarti Lechakan is a Beis Hakise Arai. It's a temporary bathroom, which basically means like a urinal. So this that I prohibited to you there, I permitted, uh, or this that I permitted to you there, established bathroom, I, per, I prohibited to you here is a Beis Hakise Arai. Uh, that would make sense that this price, uh, this statement flows very well, it fits very well. If you're going to say that this is the opinion of Beishamai, then everyone who permits something permits things, and those that prohibit, prohibit. And there's no, this, there's no separate, there's no uh, two, 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 there's no two things that one is prohi- prohibited and one permitted. Beishamai doesn't permit anything. They, they are prohibiting you to bring tefillin in both places. So how could you say, what would, how would you translate the statement if you're not going to say it's base Hillel? So how could, ultimately the question is, how could Rava say that this is, this is the statement of Beis Shammai, then you're not going to be able to explain this other statement. And uh, I guess we're going to have to stop here. And uh, okay, well, uh, I should mention that we are going to have uh, tonight uh, Hashem, we're going to have a uh, special speaker. Uh, his name is Rabbi Yossi Bronstein. Uh, Chabad Shliach uh, runs a, uh, a, a shul in, uh, in um, Hollywood. And uh, so if any of you want to invite, you can invite your friends. And gonna, I'm sure he's going to have some great stories and uh, um, in inspiration. So if anyone wants to uh, uh, forward the link of our uh, invite. What, anyone, what time, um, Rabbi? Three o'clock. As, as uh, the, the afternoon class, three o'clock. So you're all welcome to okay. join. And I'll, I'll try to forward a, a link so you could, uh, like an email, and you can you can just forward it on if you want. Yes, David. Yeah, I know we're done, uh, but I just want to throw out a question uh, on the previous Gemara where it was talking yeah. about Shmuel, Shmuel said that not only you shouldn't hold uh, your tefillin because it might uh, interfere with your concentration uh, when you're praying, but also a knife, money, a bowl, a loaf of bread. So I'm wondering if uh, there's parts of uh, when during sukkahs, uh, there's parts where we're not picking up the esrog to the last moment when you need it for the shaking. But other than that, it's like laying in the box. And uh, if that's connected to that, so so what what the issue that we're dealing with here is they didn't have tables, and you're stuck there holding your 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 uh, lulav. The, they didn't have those plastic bags that we have. They didn't have tables. And uh, the person didn't want to, um, didn't have any place to put it. So that's what, we're, that's the, that's what we're, that, that's the issue. Here. Again, no, we're dealing now, with, yeah. But now we have tables and we still don't pick up the, the s rogue until the last moment. Well, there's that's no need to. For the shakes. Yeah, yeah, no, <laughs> here there, there's no need to. But there... Uh, in the, the case that we're talking about, you had nowhere to put it. You need you need to uh, uh, hold it in your davening. You got daven. So what do you do? So uh, the Shulchan Aruch said that, that that that's a lot. You're allowed to hold a siddur, a machzer, but you're not allowed. But uh, and and uh, lulav, but you're not allowed to hold all these other things because these other things will interrupt interfere with your kavana of uh, concentrating on Hashem. So holding the esrog when you don't need to hold the esrog, is that in that category? That's what I'm wondering. Yeah, if you have nowhere to put it. Yeah, yeah. Lulav and esrog. I, I think it just uses the case of a lulav. Um, no, but I'm uh, saying, are you, are you concerned that the esrog might fall and distract you from your prayer, and therefore you don't pick up the esrog until you really need it for the shaking? That's my Oh, question. you think the reason is, oh, that's what you're saying. You think the reason why, why we don't hold it more than we're obligated to is it'll it'll interfere with our kavana right huh you can, you can look at it and answer me tomorrow because it's already over yeah. the time uh, the, the thing is i mean i think the main issue that we that we talk about the kavana is talking about shmona esra i don't know if it's if the um if this law i have to look it up the chapter 96 in the Shulchan Aruch, is this talking specifically about Shmona Esrei or is it talking about throughout the entire davening? Um, 
It's a, one of the questions because whenever it talks about tefillah, it's it's always a question. Does it refer specifically to Shmona Esrei? Um, all right, I, I, I'll try to see if I could see any uh, any source for that. That's an interesting thought. Thank you for uh, bringing it up, uh, David. I have to. Yeah, well, that, to I, yes, I uh, just yeah. wanted to bring out that the first line where they said Lo Yachaz Adam Tefillin is we talked the other day about Ish is for a specific person. And I said Adam is for general for everybody else. So here we see an example of it. That's One meaning second, what's Adam that? uh-huh. is everybody. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah, it is interesting that it doesn't just say Loyechaz in the chat. It has to say the word Adam. Why does it have to say yeah. Adam? It means everybody that holds it, you know, shouldn't hold it, feel it. Like, it, is it trying to include women? Is that why it says Adam? Like, why does it say Anybody, Adam? No, Adam doesn't include women as far as I know. Chava would include women. No, Adam would include all all humans. Well, maybe it's including... I wonder if it includes Goyim. Adam. It is interesting that it uses that term. Like, it, you would think it should just say, uh, you know, Loyechaz. You know, hmm. anyhow, we can think about it. Like the previous Gemara does say Adam, it says, yeah. Yeah. It doesn't say Adam. Here it says Adam. I, I have, I'm thinking that maybe this applies to uh, anybody that's holding film or safe or, or, or whatever. Right. Well, right. Women, it wouldn't be. It wouldn't fit the, the tefillin, but the Sefer Torah, maybe, or... Uh, they're not allowed to... Or holding, they could be holding tefillin read, and They're weeping. not allowed to read the Torah, so... No, but, no, again, we're talking about holding tefillin. It's not a problem, right? right. It could be, it could right. be women, right. Um, yeah, I don't know why it has to say the word Adam. Good, good. Uh, it's interesting that you, that, that, uh, you caught on to that. Details. It's all about details. Right. Okay, have a wonderful day, everyone. Thank you, Rebbe. Thank you. Bye, Rebbe. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Zai gesund. Zai gesund.